tonight on Most Shocking. From beamers and bullets to buses turned bulldozers. This is the wildest the road has to offer. So strap yourself in for chases and crashes. First up. Watch out, guys. Watch out. What's more intense than a flaming fugitive? How about a madman behind the wheel of a 40-ton fireball? Then, think getting blindsided by a four-wheeled wrecking ball is bad? Try being mowed down by a sinister speed demon. And a rolling gang so deadly, even cops have to hit the brakes. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking. Chases and crashes. Plymouth, Pennsylvania. Cameraman James Heck is on the scene just minutes after a dramatic pileup. It was a major motor vehicle accident, major rescue. Several people were hurt with a medevac involved. He records as crews transport injured motorists to the hospital, then begin the arduous job of clearing the street. But to his horror, James is about to discover that today's biggest story is still to come. just happened. Where's this guy coming from? Why is he going 50 miles an hour through an intersection that's closed? Is he trying to kill somebody? Turns out the driver of the SUV is actually a criminal on the run from the law. He was being chased earlier on, and so he thought that accident scene was a roadblock. So he's just trying to get away from the cops. A firefighter tries to dive out of the way, but leaps right into the path of the speeding maniac. The emergency worker is brutally dragged under the truck for 75 feet. When the firefighter got run over, everybody's thinking, is the guy all right? Is he going to live? Officers open fire to stop the renegade. The driver of the vehicle was finally stopped. I mean, after being shot at, they pulled him out of the vehicle and placed him under arrest. The suspect is not wounded. But the veteran firefighter isn't so lucky. He's medevac to the hospital with a broken leg, rib, and vertebrae. Fortunately, he'll make a full recovery. The outcome could have been much worse, and he is lucky to be alive. The callous marauder is facing a laundry list of charges. After blazing into an accident scene and mowing down a fireman, he should be grateful that one of those charges isn't murder. Victoria, Texas. This caddy full of red light runners is out to redefine the phrase hot pursuit. After chasing them for several minutes, Officer Justin Garcia tries to funnel them into a trap. Watch out, guys. Watch out. But the sedan zooms right past the trio of cops. They obviously weren't thinking from the start by running from us. Uh, I'm not sure what, what was going on inside their minds. Raging rebels tear through a maze of residential streets, barely able to control the Karenian Cadillac. Then they charge into the trees. Police know it's just a matter of time before the driver sparks a tragedy. But they never 
never guessed he'd spark an inferno. He's on fire. His vehicle's on fire right now. After plowing over a hump, the undercarriage of the car erupts in flames. Chief of Police Bruce Ewer has an idea how it happened. We believe he sheared off the oil pan and that caught fire. And as he was driving down the road at a high rate of speed, just the air, the influx, he just fanned the flames. The fiery four-door streaks like a meteor down the road until finally... The heat is too much. Overwhelmed by smoke, the road spin out at an intersection. The vehicle went, I guess I would say, maybe a tenth of a mile before it spun out. I knew that they couldn't take the heat. Cops converge on the wreck as the wheel man and his passengers try to hot-foot it out of town. That plan is also extinguished. We were able to tackle him a short distance from the car. Uh, he continued to resist, and he was tased multiple times. With the suspects already caught, they have the driver in custody. Police back their cruisers away from a growing blaze. Eventually, firefighters put out the Cadillac. And when they're done, all that's left of this wild flight is a shell of steaming scrap metal. They, they took that car as far as it would go. And then they, then they tried it on foot. And they didn't get away with that either. The driver, Michael Salazar, is convicted of evading arrest and sentenced to three years in a Lone Star pokey. These hoodlums thought they could outrun police, but their hopes crashed and burned when their car burned and crashed. Paris, France. Police struggle to catch up to a speeding brown Mustang with plenty of horsepower. Seconds ago, this military stallion got spooked and broke free from its handler. Now, cops try to stop the high-tailing hoofer. But it's hard to believe the steed is actually French. Because it refuses to surrender. Then the animal stumbles and falls, but quickly recovers. A thousand pounds of panicked creature running through traffic could end in tragedy for both man and beast. So a brave female officer jockeys for position and finally reins in the slippery suspect. The four-legged fugitive is loaded into a paddy wagon and taken away to serve time in the pen. When this thoroughbred was hot to trot, it took a concerned cop to put an end to its horsing around. Kansas City, Missouri. For most car thieves, keeping a low profile is a top priority. For the man who stole this flashy orange pickup, not so much. Even from the air, police chopper pilot Jeffrey Stockdale has no trouble spotting him. It was bright orange. Uh, and we pointed down and go, hey, there's our vehicle. Officers on the ground hang back while Jeffrey calls out the gleaming truck's positions. But police pressure or not, the outlaw is about to raise some hell on the highway. An innocent motorist tries to change lanes and let the suspect by. Instead, the callous criminal slams him from behind. I say to myself, hey, he's a hazard, he needs to be stopped. Then the vehicle exits the freeway and disappears beneath the convention center. But it doesn't take long for the eye in the sky to pick up the tangerine troublemaker. The orange truck was a gift. It was easy to follow. To the left, keep going east. But then the driver sees his aerial pursuer and hits the gas. Unfortunately, that's not all he hits. The pickup 
robot flies over a bump and goes airborne. It just misses one parked car before plowing into another. The truck is smashed to smithereens. As for the crook... I go, oh man, I know they're hurt. You know, we circle, and next thing you know, you see these two legs come out, and then this butt sticking in the air. And it turns out he's not alone. You look again, here comes another two legs and a butt sticking in the air. And then he turns around, here the police. The orange rampagers are immediately met by a sea of blue. But they should feel lucky they're not dead red. It's like, man, how, how did they survive without getting hurt? Because, I mean, it was a horrific crash. These bandits didn't understand the concept of laying low. So after this orange crush, they could be getting prison-issued jumpsuits in their favorite color. Coming up... Pedestrians step into a crosswalk and get caught in a driver's crosshair. Plus, a criminal who thinks he can outrun cops' guiding light holds on as the world turns. And later, 18 wheels of flaming fury bring a city to a standstill. But first... That's next on Most Shocking, Chases and Crashes. In any emergency, there are people in peril and rescue workers coming to help. But at this intersection in St. Louis, Missouri, firefighters play both roles. Two separate departments respond to the same call. And since both rigs have the right of way, they drive head on into catastrophe. Local resident Leroy Gorey has a perfect view of the blind intersection, but he doesn't realize the wreck is skidding his way. The truck was rolling toward me, and I didn't watch too many die hard movies not to get out the way. Thankfully, Leroy jumps to safety just in time. While the firefighters escape the accident with only minor injuries. It's just like being in a movie. I'm going for being alive. These American heroes make it a point to get to any crisis in the nick of time. But today, disaster found them. Los Angeles, California. When it comes to taking a dangerous criminal like this one off the road, retired Lieutenant Gordy Johnson knows there's nothing more effective than the pit maneuver. They already got it with the spike strips. His tire is going flat. This should take long. In this particular pursuit, freeway looked pretty wide open. Speed was not excessive. It was, it was right to employ the pit maneuver. But sometimes even perfect conditions don't guarantee success. A cruiser spins the suspect sedan. Nearly tearing off the back end. But the driver refuses to give in. He's still moving. No front tire, no, no bumper, but he's moving. Another cop moves in to give it a go. Oh, the suspect maintains control. But like a twisted game of bumper cars, the wreck stays its course. Now police can only hope the third time's the charm. In one quick move, a patrol car rams the hooligan into a barrier. But incredibly, he keeps moving. Unbelievable! This thing has survived three of the officer's tactical maneuvers. 
When you're pursuing a person who continues to move forward, the car is clear to be stable. Why the desperation? What is he fleeing from? Is he armed? Has he got evidence he wants to get rid of? And those sometimes can be the most dangerous. But as the threat increases, so does the determination of officers. Here we go. They're going to try and pin him a fourth time. They barrel into the hellion again. And this time, it's a game changer. The city's finest surround the disabled vehicle. And finally haul their prisoner downtown for possible outstanding drug warrants. And the lieutenant has some advice for others who might be thinking about following in this outlaw's trends. For the people out there who decide they want to run from law enforcement, you've got better odds in the lottery. You're going to get caught. It's rush hour in the city, and everyone's a little too eager to get where they're going. Including this group of pedestrians who are apparently too impatient to wait on the sidewalk. But instead of gaining a head start across the street, they're standing in the express lane to an early grave. A motorist speeds to beat the red light, but hits the brakes at the last second and skids. The four people on the corner never see him coming. One is flipped upside down and smashed against a barrier. While another two are knocked aside and left dazed in the gutter. The driver and his passenger step out in shock. Completely unaware, a fourth victim is still pinned underneath their vehicle. Finally, a good Samaritan notices the body. Onlookers don't wait for an ambulance to act. They lift the car off the unconscious man by hand. Moments later, emergency workers flood the intersection. It doesn't look good. But incredibly, no one, including the commuter who got run over, is killed in the sliding crash. Hopefully, all parties involved in this rush hour nightmare have learned the lesson of better late than never. It must be opposite day in Manchester, England. Because in this armed robbery pursuit, it's the criminals who decide to chase the police. Wielding machetes, four members of a brutal gang rush the squad car and force the lone officer to retreat. One even chucks his weapon at the bobby. Their gutsy gambit seems to work. The perps dash back to their getaway car. But their dramatic escape is short-lived. The five hoods are rounded up along with four accomplices. These blade-wielding bad guys thought it was a slick trick turning the tables on the cops. But they were only delaying the inevitable. A fully loaded tour bus makes an unscheduled stop. And a bank robber may be quicker than cops, but he's not faster than a speeding bullet. Then, a woman running a computer store thinks twice about using windows. Shocking chases and crashes returns. Eugene, Oregon. Sue Chewy is living the American dream. She manages her own computer shop and works side by side with her daughter Michelle. It's great. We go to work together, we go home together, we stop and do shopping together, so it's it's pretty special. Today, Michelle tries to reboot a unit that just went down, but it's not the computer crash she should be worried about.
Without warning, a four-door sedan barrels through the front counter. It just exploded. We all thought a bomb had gone off. Sue's business lies in ruins. But the state of the merchandise is the least of her worries. The first thing that went through my mind is, oh my God, is my daughter all right? But a closer view shows that even though the vehicle heads right for Michelle, the front door works like a bulldozer. It pushes her chair out of the way just before the car careens into the back wall. All I really remember is screaming. And the next thing I really remember was being on the other side of the room and somebody trying to help me stand up. I feel very lucky to be alive. Shaken, Michelle calls 911 while her co-workers check on the driver. When firefighters finally pull the motorist from the wreck, Sue recognizes him as a frequent customer. He did apologize I don't know how many times. He's a wonderful man. I've known him for years, and I know he would never do anything like this intentionally. The man's fortunate no one decides to press charges, because one look at the smashed storefront shows just how lucky Michelle is to be alive. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you see in movies, and I would rather it stay in movies than had to experience it myself. Moscow, a bank robber in a Beamer carves through traffic like the Russian transporter. Unfortunately for him, the cops on his tail like action films, too. Police open fire on his tires and head him off at the pass. But the rampaging rebel shakes them at the turn and takes a mad dash through the park. When the road narrows, a second patrol car steps up the engagement. Officers lean out the window with guns blazing. The fleeing sedan absorbs 30 point-blank rounds. And even a few angry blows. It's a treacherous cat and mouse game until police finally box in the criminal. And with nowhere to go, the reckless Ruski cries uncle. In a true life crime story played out on Russian streets, cops and robbers took on their rightful roles. And in true Hollywood fashion, it's now curtains for the bad guy. Derbyshire, England. This carefree crook just filled his tank with stolen gas. Now with police hot on his tail, he tries to burn up the evidence. He speeds within inches of a mother and her baby carriage. Then nearly flattens pedestrians as he leaps a curb. If that's not enough to slow him down, traffic won't either. The gas bandit revs it in reverse, pulling a nifty U-turn. But that's when things take an even deadlier twist. The mean green driving machine charges into a crowded school zone. Trapped, he barrels down the sidewalk at 40 miles an hour. Anyone accidentally stepping into his path faces certain doom. Then suddenly, he rams an ambulance. He 
He's already taken aim at women and children, so the sick and injured certainly don't face him. When an officer tries to box him in, he punches the pedal and grinds free. But this driver's greatest hits just reach the final track. A tire blows in a shower of sparks, putting the brakes on his white knuckle ride. The belligerent hoodlum actually slams the door in a cop's face, but gets a mouthful of concrete in return. He risked countless innocent lives, all for a simple tank of gas. But now, thanks to authorities, he's running on empty. Usually a tour bus gives travelers a slightly removed view of the sights around town. Not today. No one saw that coming. It starts when the red car swerves into the fast lane, then suddenly slows down. The bus driver has no time to react. The 12-ton juggernaut skids out, clipping the back of the sedan and sandwiching it against a semi. Dozens of bystanders rush in to help. Terrified, they've just witnessed a fatal crash. But though the compact is pulverized, the stunned commuter walks away from the accident. As for the whiplash sightseers from the bus, they hop on a replacement ride, hoping the rest of their trip is a little less exciting. When this motorist pulled in front of a barreling behemoth, he became a bus stop on the road to ruin. Still to come, a dangerous criminal hijacks a big rig and turns it into an 18-wheeled missile. But first, an amateur outlaw runs from the cops, then takes himself out. And it's four tires versus two. And two losers. That's next on Most Shocking Chases and Crashes. Van Buren, Arkansas. Corporal Mark McGraw has his hands full trying to stop a man suspected of DUI. But drunk or no, this guy's about to do the cop's job for him. The runaway slams his brakes, forcing McGraw left, but then makes an inexplicable move. He actually turned into me. Contact was on his driver's side door. That caused the car to spin around. The speed demon doesn't even realize how big a break he just gave police. Against our her city policy, they actually do a quick maneuver. And they turned out to be the perfect pit. He kept his car in the drive. Hit my car about three times. And I went ahead and pinned him against the curb. With the door buckled shut, McGraw grabs the fugitive through the passenger window and pulls him to the pavement. All he could say was, I'm drunk, I give it up, I don't want no more. Randall Burkett is convicted of first-degree criminal mischief and sentenced to three years. Taking dangerous drivers off the road may be a difficult task. But suspects like this one make it look all too easy. With so many vehicles passing from every which way, large city intersections can be a well-oiled machine or a breeding ground for disaster.
just as this black sedan pulls into what the driver believes is a clear lane, a speeding motorcyclist screams in at over 80 miles an hour. For the biker, the collision is devastating. With no time to break, he's launched 20 feet to the asphalt, helmet first. Luckily, the protective gear saves his life. But hopefully this rider will think twice the next time he feels the need for speed. San Clemente, California. Heading on the 5 north now, approaching Alameda. Nothing is more formidable than a wanted man hell-bent on escape. Except perhaps for a wanted woman. She's doing at least 90, coming up on heavy traffic. According to retired officer John Garofalo, the lady is a lethal threat to anyone in her path. She's driving a 3,000-pound weapon at speeds in excess of 80 and 90 miles an hour. It's a weapon she's not afraid to use. She's picking up speed. Oh, she just hit that car. She plows into an unsuspecting motorist and sparks fly as her terrified target runs for cover. She really did not care about the safety of the public. She didn't care about the safety of the police officers. And she didn't care about her own safety. So it was a very, very, very volatile, dangerous situation. This suspect, wanted in connection to an armed robbery, now facing even more trouble. The lady thief charges ahead, more determined than ever to leave cops in her dust. But the earlier crash has severely crippled her getaway. Okay, she's getting off here, and it, and it looks like sparks. Looks like a tire's out. The only surprise is that the chase lasted this long. She's driving a Saturn, not a Corvette. So that car was not meant to drive at those speeds. Seeing an opportunity, cops quickly close in. This chase may be coming to an end. That's CHP trying for a pit. The first attempt to spin her to a stop just misses. But the second is dead on target. Oh, spun her out. Suspect spun out. This is textbook. This could be taught at the police academy. They bumped her car, which pushed her into the ditch. The police then came in, blocked her in. But the woman behind the wheel is in no rush to surrender. And since she could still be packing heat, cops exercise extreme caution. We don't know definitely who this woman is. And she's a burglary suspect. So this could be a two-striker. We could have somebody with a weapon who's going to get away at all costs. Looks like one officer approaching on the right now. Under the cover of darkness, an officer creeps up from behind and gives her the shock of a lifetime. That's a taser. She's just been tased. She's caught off guard by 50,000 volts from a stun gun. Finally putting an end to her wild run. They put their own lives on the line um, by using non-lethal means and taking a chance that she did not have a weapon. It was a night that could have ended in tragedy. But thanks to police persistence, this day will be spinning her wheels in jail. Coming up, officers take aim at a truck full of outlaws. First with their cars, and then with their guns. Plus, a brutal reminder to look both ways before crossing the street. And see how parking in the city can be a nightmare. If you can't take the heat, get out of the road on Most Shocking Chases and Crashes. Buenos Aires, Argentina. The pedestrian in this crosswalk has the right of way. 
too bad. It's at the wrong time. An oblivious motorist slams into the man and drops him to the pavement. The speeder stops the car and goes to check on his victim. Turns out both the careless Leadfoot and the knocked out Nightwalker were on their cell phones and didn't see each other until it was too late. Fortunately, the pancake pedestrian will bounce back after these two got their wires crossed. in Arkansas. An officer spots two robbery suspects in a gray SUV and wings a quick 180. Little does he know, this chase is a family affair. Sisters Tamika and Sharika Caldwell just knocked off a Chinese restaurant. And chances are their fortune cookie reads will do hard time. The barreling brood weaves through traffic at blistering speeds. So when the patrolman sees his chance, he goes for it. When the sisters slow down, the cop hits them with a pit maneuver. He's successful, but his momentum sends him into a ditch. More officers arrive and surround two gray SUVs, unsure of which is the right one. Incredibly, the answer is neither. In the confusion, the sinister siblings made their escape. But cops quickly find the criminal kin speeding down the interstate. And they're going the wrong way. The girls quickly collect themselves. But when they get hung up in traffic, two troopers jump out with guns drawn. Unwilling to surrender, the blacktop banditas put the pedal to the metal. And cops respond with hot lead. Facing the threat of being run over, police have no choice but to open fire. But it turns out the truck wasn't the only thing blasted by bullets. Sharika has been hit twice. Step back here. Lay down. Lay down. Lucky for her, she'll survive. We have two gunshot wounds. We have uh, ambulance in the house. Sharika Caldwell receives six years probation, but Tamika is convicted of burglary and felony fleeing, earning her a 14-year stay behind bars. When these sisters of sin took a wild ride and put innocent lives in danger, they found out the hard way that blood is thicker than water. Finding a good parking place downtown is never easy. Especially when you're drunk. This sedan full of college kids aims for a spot behind this car and winds up hitting everything but the mark. The day's driver stumbles from the wreck to admire his curb job while his passengers climb out, amazed they're not roadkill. But this boozer shouldn't feel too bad. Because if he was just looking for a place to park for a few hours, police have the perfect spot. Pop quiz! How do you stop a man with a death wish and an 80,000 pound weapon? 
find out next on Most Shocking, Chases and Crashes. Dallas, Texas. Wanted criminal Bernice Wilson just hijacked a big rig. What's worse, he's recently been diagnosed with a fatal disease. Now, Wilson has nothing to lose. And Senior Corporal Janice Crowther fears the maniac will try to take as many victims with him as possible. The fact that this was such a large vehicle, we had a man who was totally out of control, didn't care what he was doing or who he hurt, we had to stop it. Cops move in to shoot out his tires. But there's a problem. Two of the wheels had already blown out and caused the fire. This did not slow down the truck, so we realized that just shooting out the tires on this truck was not going to stop it. Children scatter in fear as Wilson barrels through their neighborhood. With a truck this size, pedestrians aren't the only ones at risk. No matter what kind of car a person was driving, they were no match for this 18-wheeler. Finally, the suspect hits the open highway, and sharpshooters take up positions on an overpass. The threat to public safety and to the officers involved was so great that we had to disable the suspect at all costs. One sniper takes the shot and strikes the fugitive in the shoulder, forcing him to slam on the brakes. The wounded renegade crawls from the cab and surrenders. He'll get 28 years in prison for his deadly run, while the public breathes a sigh of relief. We are very, very fortunate right now that no one was killed. When this trucker discovered he could be at the end of his road, he tried to take the city along for the ride and got shot down. Somewhere between where the rubber meets the road. And the bumper meets the wall. Lies a line you just shouldn't cross. So keep your hands at 10 and 2. Always check your mirrors. 